<laughs> yeah, we, we don't mess around. We don't mess around. <laughs> All right. Swag on the walls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we just got to do something about that corner. Ah, yeah. Because when we get to doing video, the, that doesn't look good in the background. This stuff looks good, yeah, but looks that cool. looks terrible. We'll probably just get a black drape and hang it and leave it at that. Okay, let me just uh, mark that there, and I'm ready. You're ready? Yeah, we're recording. All right, here we go. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, special quarterly update with uh, Chris Gwynn from the National Park Service about uh, what's going on there uh, this time of year at the park. And... uh, Chris, welcome back to the show. Oh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's always nice to have you. Um, we find them informative as well as enjoyable. So. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> so um, let's get right to it. There's a lot of stuff uh, going on now. We, we we get a lot of questions as if we know, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I say, I don't know. Um, but let's ask some of them now uh the big thing that everybody we've been talking about on the show and we've you know charlie fennel has given us some insight yeah. into it um but i we'd still we want to hear it right from the park what is going on with little round top and culp's hill uh, we hear little round top's going to be closed for a year and a half two years perhaps mm-hmm. uh culp's hill they're currently uh clearing or they've started clearing i should say what's the story yeah, let's start out with Culp's Hill since that's sure. ongoing right now. So the project that visitors see happening over at Culp's Hill is really an extension of our Battlefield Rehabilitation Program, which we've been doing as a park uh, for you know a couple of decades now. Mm-hmm. And through the, the generous um, sponsorship, for lack of a better word, of our partners, the Gettysburg Foundation and uh, one of their board members, Uh, The park is now able to begin the rehabilitation of about 18 acres of the historic woodlot on Culp's Hill. So when visitors go there today, they'll see that we're taking down a lot of the the smaller trees and underbrush Mm -hmm. that exist on the slopes today. The basic idea being we're trying to take a section, a sector of the hill, and try to rehabilitate that woodlot so it looks more like it would have in 1863, less so, you know, how it looks today, today yeah, yeah. <laughs> yesterday yeah, yeah um so that you know when visitors go up to the hill they get a better sense of the battlefield as the soldiers would have seen it uh, as the the combatants would have experienced it and they're constructing uh breastworks in some part of it well, like we're, like we're a, a full things yeah yeah so the, the the removing the non-historic vegetation that's kind of what we call it mm-hmm. uh that, that's the big part and that's what you see happening right now but there's also an interpretive element that will go along with that and that involves a couple things a trail that will take you down to a rock outcropping that appears in a number of Edwin Forbes illustrations. Sure. Very famous rock outcropping. We call it Forbes Rocks. Uh, so that's part of it, that, that trail system. There'll be some in, uh, updated interpretive signage and a trail guide that'll allow you to kind of explore the hill on your own terms, uh, walking the, in the, the route of the uh, Union Defense Works. Mm-hmm. And there's a talk about I guess I'd call it an interpretive field exhibit of uh, potentially constructing a, a breastwork similar to what the men of the 12th Corps would have built on July 2nd, 1863. Because I think visitors, when they go up today, they see the remnants. Yeah, the mound. The mound. Yeah. That really is not necessarily terribly evocative of what would have actually been on the hill. Mm-hmm. So uh, hopefully we're going to do, uh, do a better job of interpreting that. It's just going to be a section, though. It's not going to be the whole thing, right? It'll be a section. Yeah. yeah. An interpretive field exhibit yeah. is the best way to okay. think about it. Okay. It's not going to be on the actual breastworks. No, 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 It'll no, no, be no. separate from the breastworks. And the best way to think about this is that it's meant to be illustrative, right? It's just mm-hmm. giving you a sense, okay, this is what it would have looked like. It will not be along the alignment of the original. Mm-hmm. And basically, imagine a museum exhibit except out in the field. Yeah, no, I love this idea. Uh, I'm one of these visual learners. Like, I've always needed to see things. But moreover, I need to put myself there. And to go to the grounds is one thing. But to go to the grounds and see them as a soldier would have seen them or as close to it as we possibly can get, it pu- it's just more uh, moving to me. And, it, and it, it helps me understand things even better. So I can't wait for this. How long is this supposed to take? Well, our hope is right now that we do um, kind of a, a virtual ribbon cutting on July 2nd of 2021. Oh, okay. But, and this is the, something that I think everybody needs to understand with any of our rehabilitation efforts, 
it's got to be something that you go back to and that you take care of and that you sustain over mm. time because you can go out and you can remove you know 100 acres of woods and create a field that field still wants to be 100 acres exactly. of woods though so you know, if you look at the history of the park here and what we've attempted to do since you know 1998 one of the big challenges is yeah we can go out and we can remove trees and we can plant orchards but you always got to sustain them you got to take care of them right and so this is a long-term investment well, this is something we've always, we've actually, when we talk about it, we, this has come up is, is exactly what you just said. You can clear it, but can you maintain it? What, what happens afterwards? And already some of the things that have been uh, cleared in, in my memory, um, when, when I, like since 05, when I lived here, um, you know, their nature's starting to creep its way back in. Yep. And so, so what, what can we do? I mean, because it is expensive to go and clear out that brush every year. Or, but what does the park do to maintain those things? And what are they looking to do in the future to maintain maybe spots that they haven't maintained so far? Well, one thing that we don't do, and I think this is fundamental, is at a very basic level, we do not maintain the landscape the same way that mid-19th century farmers maintain the landscape. Right. We just don't do that. Mm -hmm. And so we have to come up with other methods to, um, to sustain what we've done. And, you know, we, we've used fire recently and that, yep. uh, prescribed burns are a great way for us to be able to take like a little round top, for example, right. it's Western face, which should be clear of vegetation. We use fire as a prescription, as a tool to try to maintain that landscape. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect example of one of the ways that we attempt to do it. There are others, mowing, volunteer efforts, um, you know, right. uh, there's a lot of different ways that we try to maintain that landscape. You mentioned volunteer efforts. Um, how do people, like who, who, how do people do that? Like if people wanted to volunteer and like clear out the brush at a certain patch of wood somewhere, can they do that? Well, uh, what we're doing right now is we're in the process of taking a look at our volunteer program. Mm -hmm. um, primarily, and I'm sure many of your listeners are familiar with our adopt a position program, which is yes, very yes, popular. Yes. And rethinking that in a way that is a bit more sustainable for the park to be able to manage. Uh, but in the past, I mean, we've had volunteers that have played an integral role in maintaining the landscape, either building fence lines or removing brush. I mean, uh, Boy Scouts, for example, uh, I worked with them last year, two years ago, uh, removing um, brush along a lot of the rock walls near the Leicester House. And hmm. you know, that kind of community involvement is just so important. Someone listening right now wants to do that. Do they contact you? Who do they contact? Uh, the they don't contact anyone right now because oh. we're in the process again of trying to rethink how do we do this. Okay, how and and actually, sure? uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, adopt a position is canceled for this year. Uh, the, it's I, on hold. I, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. on hold. Yeah. So okay, so wait until COVID is done and then get in touch with yeah, you I think guys. That's certainly, yeah. COVID has changed uh, yeah. operations across the face of the national parks. So yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we're currently in the winter. Spring is almost here. Um, I've been I've wanted you to come on earlier, but what what are you guys doing for the winter? You're not doing winter lectures, but you're doing something else online. What yeah, are you doing? so we've basically taken that same idea and we've tried to um, tried to uh, give visitors winter lecture light online. And so, uh, you know, one of the great things not the great things, but one of the the silver linings of yeah, the, the current world is that we're not open uh, for a good chunk of the week. Mm. And so that means the museum is you know, quiet, which it rarely is. And mm -hmm. so we said, you know, why don't we use that to our advantage? We'll go in and we'll do uh, brief winter lectures. We'll each pick out an object or artifact on display and we'll talk about it. And so that's what we've done since uh, second week of January. Every Saturday at 9 a.m. we profile a different object in our collection or artifact on display and just tell its story. Yeah, and people are liking that. Uh, you know... Are you hearing complaints? You know, you're, you're, no, you're no, looking no, like you're. <laughs> no, I think um, it's not. It's not what we did in 2019. Sure. It's not you know. It's not the traditional winter lecture series. I think the staff like it. We like doing well, sure. it. It's something different. Yeah. And you know, the hope is that you take something that's very, um, in a certain sense, I mean, uh, very small, and you would pass by it in the museum, but. This gives us an opportunity to really delve into its story and, and humanize it, which I think is always good. Small artifacts might have a big story. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, I would think people would like that because uh, you don't get to see them, and there's so like there's so much more in the collection that isn't visible to the public, 
at the visitor center. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. and so so this is a cool way to to see some of that stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to see, or you'd have to wait until it's rotated into the. Yeah, you know, and our hope is people watch it, and then the next time they're walking through the galleries and it's on display, they're like, "Oh, I remember yeah, that yeah. Cappy from John Hoptax Winter Lecture." <laughs> yeah, there and you it, go. It, it's a touchdown then. Yeah, uh, what do you got in store for spring? I'm 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 assuming the Ranger walks aren't coming back this year. Well, I hope they come back. Oh. I hope they come back. Okay. Uh, you know, our strategy is to be very cautious, uh -huh. very conservative, and surgical, but with the ultimate hope that we can begin to offer some services, uh, some programs, as the the months unfold. So I can tell you, in you know April, May, we're not going to be doing anything. Right. Um, we're focused almost exclusively on being able to offer virtual field trips for students, and we do... Okay. We're going to be doing a ton of those. Okay, because normally those. they come here, but this year they're not. That's right. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And so we've really pivoted to make sure that we're meeting the needs of, of educators who all of a sudden find themselves in a strange new world and unable to offer a, you know, a traditional field trip experience. So, I mean, we are, we are maxed out in terms of distance learning uh, yeah. through Zoom or uh, Skype, being able to connect with, with students online, which is wonderful. We're happy to do it. Sure. Our hope, though, is that, you know, COVID continues, uh, cases continue to decline, uh, vaccines become more prevalent, that we can slowly begin to resume some of the, the programs that we love doing and that yeah. you know, really fuel us creatively, certainly. I'll tell you, 2020 was so weird. It didn't, it didn't feel like a year to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it's like we all just took a break. It's kind of our lost year, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and nothing, I didn't feel like I lived in Gettysburg. Because there were no ranger walks, and I like to yeah. catch those on Saturdays, uh, you know, whenever I can. And uh, I, I don't know. It was just a very weird year. But at the end of the day, I still was here at Gettysburg because that, that's what kept me sane was being able to walk around the battlefield, you know. There like, was, it, was, it, was a strange, it was a strange year. Very in, weird In year. many ways. Yeah. But, um, well, I'm glad to hear, though, that, that all is not lost for ranger walks this year, possibly, because yeah. uh, I think people love those. And, and people ask us about those all the time. You know, do you know if they're going to do them again? And again, I say I don't know, but that's why we have Chris here. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, um, <clears throat> obviously, the safety of, of visitors and the safety of staff, they're our primary, um, mm -hmm. primary concerns, and we're not going to do it until we feel reasonably assured that we can conduct these in a safe way. And so, again, my hope is we start off small, but we, we ramp up as conditions improve. Last year, though, you kind of, you, you had, you didn't announce that you were doing anything in particular, but you would have a ranger kind of roam an area and talk to people, but not say gather around for exactly, I have news. Exactly, yeah. So are you going to continue to do that this year? I think it's really important that when visitors come to the battlefield, they can have the ability to engage or they see the national yeah. park service presence i agree either as a you know an interpreter certainly or law enforcement officers are always out but to maintain that kind of informal presence where i'm not necessarily you know surrounded by a hundred people uh, uh you know during an anniversary walk but uh that that visitors have an opportunity to interact with the green and gray ranger uh, that's really important so we'll always continue that but now if you are able to do interpretive walks where you announce them ahead of time um, like I think, uh, last year, I think outdoor group limit was 250 people in Pennsylvania. I, I believe that's still what we're at right now. Okay. Is, does, does the park service have its own rules as far as that? Like, do you follow federal law with that or do you follow the state that you're in? Well, in this case, we follow Pennsylvania state okay. law. Okay. Um, but certainly we sit, we get directives and we have policy that we also have to follow. So, right. you know, earlier we were talking about um, mask wearing in the museum and visitor center and actually in federal facilities. Yeah. And that's something, you know, we obviously follow because we're a federal entity. Talk about that real quick. Cause that's another thing people seem to have confusion on, uh, <clears throat> at least as far as it pertains to Gettysburg, forget about the rest of the national park service, but in Gettysburg, you come to Gettysburg national military park, you're in the visitor center. You have to wear a mask. Absolutely. Yep. You go outside Yep. Tell us about that. What do you have to do? Well, uh, when you go outside and you're within the bounds of the national park, this is really simple. If you can't socially distance, you need to wear a mask. Okay. So like you said before, like you're out in the middle of Pickett's Charge, nobody's there. Yeah. Don't wear a mask. You're out walking your dog at sunrise on Hancock Avenue, and you were the only one around for miles. Right. You don't need to wear a mask. But if it's 2 o'clock p.m. on Little Round Top on a Saturday and it's 70 degrees out and the masses are on the hill and you can't socially distance and you're not with your family group you have to wear a mask now you just brought up little round top we talked about culp's hill before 
what's the plan for Little Round Top? Because uh, that scenario that you just gave with the mask and thousands of people on Little Round Top isn't going to be possible for a while after a certain time. So what's the plan for Little Round Top? Why are they doing it? How long are they doing it? What are they doing? Well, I don't think the, the larger project hopefully isn't a, a mystery to you and, and your listeners. So the Park Service for many, many years has been contemplating a rehabilitation effort for Little Round Top. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the reasons behind it are actually a couple. Uh, one, Little Round Top's the most visited spot on the battlefield. Uh, so it gets a lot of visitation. Mm -hmm. And when you have a very kind of dynamic, fragile sites like Little Round Top that get a lot of visitation, there are a lot of problems that can be created. There's inadequate parking, especially for bus parking. And mm -hmm. it's not aligned what I would call correctly. So imagine, you know, you're a you're an eighth grade class and you're on your field trip and your licensed battlefield guide brings you up to Little Round Top and you park uh, up on the hill. Well, there's either one of two scenarios. One, you're going to load your kids off and they're going to exit the bus basically in the middle of the street. Right. Or on the uh, slope, which there's no <laughs> sidewalk. You know, you no fall off the rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there's that. Uh, a lot of times uh, parking is maxed out, and we have people parking where we don't necessarily want them to park. So we uh -huh. want to fix some of that, hopefully. Okay. Uh, a lot of the trails are severely eroded. That's a problem. We've got to fix yeah. that. A lot of resource damage. There are a lot of places on the hill where you know we've never really told visitors how to go, right, to get to where they want to go. Right. And so we need to improve our trails, and we need to make sure <laughs> that you know they're not climbing over visitors. They're not climbing over some of the the field uh, uh, breastworks that are still up mm -hmm. on the hill, the defensive works. Yeah, some of those are just flat from people climbing over them. It's just yeah. all falling apart. Years of usage. And, yeah. you know, it's a very fragile place, Little Round Top. It's a very yeah. fragile place. And you have, um, you know, a lot of these these features date from the time of the battle or shortly thereafter. They've been certainly restacked and taken care of. But it's, it's a fragile ecosystem. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we're protecting it while at the same time, Allowing visitors the ability to access it. I think uh, I, th I think it was uh, Latcher when he was superintendent. I think he said uh, famously, "We're loving Little Round Top to death." Yeah, yeah. is it him that said that? Yeah, I believe that. Did I get yeah. that right? Yeah. Um, and and he's right. Like uh, we we complain about it all the time. Like you go up there and uh, you know you're, if you're walking on the path, the blacktop, uh, you could. If you go to step off of it, it's like a three foot drop in some places. Yeah, it's and, treacherous. And, yeah, it's treacherous. And uh, so it is okay. So now let's let's either confirm or dispel some rumors that are going around about exactly what this is going to look like. Because I've had some people. There's apparently some old plan going out there where there's going to be observation decks built, and it's going to look like you know. UFOs have landed on Little Round Top. Uh, I feel fairly confident in assuring your visitors that it will not look like UFOs have landed okay, on good. the summit of Little Round good. Top. Good, 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 good. Uh, um, now, it, so what, what is it exactly that they're going to do to rehabilitate yet still make it accessible and maybe so that it's not going to erode so quickly and easily? Well, the first thing I'll say is that, I mean, this plan is, is ongoing. And so if you're looking... For me to say uh, nitty gritty, here's all the the finer points. I mean, I don't have it. Okay. But big so, picture, big picture though. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, just to clarify though, these observation decks. Is this a rumor? Is this totally out of the question? Is it possible? Or do you, you're looking like you don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> am I? Where am I getting this there, from? There will be no observation decks. Okay. Good. I, good. So in I, other I, words, if if I'm over um, on the Confederate line and I'm gazing at Little Round Top, I will, except for the monuments, I won't be able to notice anything man-made up there. Do you, well, I don't know if I would say that. Okay. Um, okay. What I, what I will say is that it was very important to the park that that we do this in a way that's very sensitive to the the historical ambiance of the hill, if you will. And okay. When, you know, when people go to Little Round Top. One of the reasons they go there is because it's Little Round Top and it's real, right? Mm -hmm. And and having that ability to commune with something that is real and is authentic is really important. So sure. you don't want to go to a hill um, like Little Round Top or a really kind of dynamic historic site and feel as though you're in some alien world where, you know, <laughs> there's all this tremendous infrastructure between you right. and the place. Yes. And so when we talk about, you know, rehabilitation efforts, you know, um, we want to protect the hill, obviously. We want to protect visitors. As far as Little Round Top, what that really involves is, a, is an improved trail system. Okay. So the okay. trails, when you go up there, if we've done our job right, 
you're gonna, you're not going to fall off the three foot you know drop uh, <laughs> that has been eroded out. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be on a a surface that hopefully is harmonious with the natural landscape. So like not blacktop. Uh, you, per se we have a lot of options in terms of okay and we, we don't know and a lot of times the surface type might be dependent on where you are in the hill so what you encounter mm. in the parking lot is going to be different than what you might be walking down makes sense to go okay. see the 83rd pennsylvania monument okay okay yeah 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 so kind of having that hierarchy of trails and experiences you know a big a big thing and a lot of visitors don't think about this but providing accessibility for handicapped visitors is really important. Yeah. So in those cases, having a grade that's ADA accessible, it's a, uh, obviously it'll have to have some sort of hardened surface on it. Right. Uh, to make sure that, that visitors who have mobility issues can access parts of the hill, that's really important. Sure. And so that's a consideration. Uh, we want you to know where the trail ends and where the trail begins. And, and by that, you know, you're walking along. There's so much damage and erosion up there right now that sometimes the trail just kind of drops off the face of the, the hill. And so we want to fix those things. Yeah. We want to create gathering areas where if you're a guide or if you're with a group and you want to get off the trail, you can do it in a way that's not going to damage the breastworks that are up there. Okay. Or erode the, the landscape. So we're talking about, again, creating these little gathering areas, we're calling them. And then, you know, an improved interpretive experience where when you start, there'll be a little orientation area. That tells you, okay, this is Little Round Top. This is why it's important. Here's what you can do to protect it as you explore the hill. Will there be um, like a rule that says you can't leave the trail? Or would you be able, if I wanted to go down the slope and just kind of get a feel for what it would be like for a Confederate to uh, assault that hill? That, that comes to us making sure that we're providing opportunities for visitors who want to do that to mm -hmm. do it in a way that is safe and is not going to damage the hill. So I can tell you right now. We have a proposed trail that begins down uh, oh. down on Warren Avenue. Okay. Where if you want to pretend you're in the 4th Texas and follow the route of that attack, you're going to be able to do it. Awesome. Okay, good. Do, All do right. You, do you think that's going to follow the, more or less the path that's kind of worn into the hill there now? I think it would be very similar okay. to it. Yeah. Um, with few exceptions. We want to obviously make sure it's, it's laid out correctly so we sure. don't have runoff and things like sure. that. Sure, as opposed to just like, you know... A, basically an ant yeah. trail that people have worn out in. <laughs> yeah, you know, know and what, I mean, we call them social trails because that's what they are. Yeah. And, you know, one of the big challenges is the 16th Michigan, they dedicated their monument on Little Round Top in the expectation that people would go and read it. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And we want to provide you with a way to get yeah, there right. so you could go and read it. Yeah. Uh, but doing it in a way where you're not climbing over the breastworks that were built the night of July 2nd or the morning of July 3rd, uh, that's an important component of this yeah i think that's probably why i've never actually gone down to their monument is just not I, easy. I would just feel it's bad tough. It's going tough. Off same of with the 83rd pennsylvania yeah. um i mean yeah. most of those trails down there they're social trails sure. that have been developed over time because we've never said yeah here's a safe way to get there okay this is this is good because I, I i must admit i uh, among a lot of the people i hear from were worried that you know by the time it was finished it was going to be unrecognizable to us and what we the organic relationship that we have with little round top today will be gone when this project is over and it doesn't sound like it it sounds like it's still going to be possible to get all the things that we love out of it but it's not going to <laughs> wash away to the size of a pimple eventually like it's going to stay there the idea that and again we're going to we're going to construct the barricades or something yeah. up yeah. on the hill. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's not okay. Thing. All right, so you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, everybody that's worried, stop worrying. It's going to be fine. <laughs> now, uh, Charlie Fennell was on, and, and he was giving us some information about these two projects with the hills, mm -hmm. and um, he presented it as uh, the Culp's Hill one should be done you know, by summer, by the anniversary. Um, so that they could start a little round top, uh, guess, guess in the fall, late fall or so, and and then that'll be another year and a half or so um, before that's finished. Um, is that basically the timeline? Uh, you know, roughly, uh, and and we hope the Park Service hopes to to provide better communication on this uh, mm -hmm. in the you know the weeks coming. Um, you know, you know how the government operates, though. Um, slowly, <laughs> <laughs> the wheels of progress uh, <laughs> churn slowly. Yes. So, um, you know, we we initially were thinking of a fall 2021, but that's not hard and fast. So don't hold us. OK. Up. OK. So don't be surprised if it is in the fall, but that's not definite. We're going to make sure that every um, visitor who cares at all about Gettysburg has <laughs> ample warning in terms of when we start some of Because there are a lot of people that care about this place. A lot. Like we, uh, yeah, we, we, it's like our own 
you know, backyard. A lot of people look at it with the same type of uh, love and care as you do for, you know, like, you know how some guys are with their backyards. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put these oh, bushes yeah. over. You know, it's like See, we, we just love it here. And well, and that's a good thing. And that, that should be that should be symptomatic of a positive experience visiting a historic site. You yeah. become you become attached to it. It has personal relevance. You become a steward of the place. Yeah. And then you, you, you uh, are now part of the, the, the community of people that care deeply about Little Round Top or Culp's Hill or Devil's Den. And it helps. I think our, our uh, personnel, you, got, you guys uh, here at the Park Service, uh, help that a lot, too. It's, I, I haven't met one person I dislike. I, th- everybody, <laughs> I mean, everybody's really <laughs> friendly. They're really nice. They're great with the public. Um, and you could tell that you guys all love this place. And I think that helps. Like, it's not just a job. Like, you oh, actually no. love it here. Yeah. And you love working here. And I, I get that sense from everybody that I talk to. And I don't know if that's the everywhere, but I know that here that seems to be that we have, like, a, a really cool staff that really loves to be here. Yeah, I mean... I want to say it's indicative of the kind of the park service. Uh, In wide. general, it's not always the case though. But there are certain parks that, for whatever reason, um, you know, the, the folks that are here, they really want to be here. Yeah, I mean, and I'm in the same boat. I mean, I you know, always wanted to work at at Gettysburg since I was a little kid. Yeah, was it, this the first park you worked at right out of school? Yeah, I was an intern here. And then you intern. you got hired on right away. Or right, not right no, away, not but, really. Uh, I mean, I got I got a seasonal uh, position where I was working as a ranger on a seasonal basis, and then I left, worked at a couple of other parks, and was just fortunate enough to be able to come back. I'm sure you had a good experience at the other parks. I don't want you to put them down, but I'm, uh, I, were you like, uh, it's not the same as Gettysburg? Like, it's were not, you missing no. Gettysburg? I, I, I've had wonderful experiences at all the parks that I've worked at. They're all yeah. com- completely unique, but Gettysburg is its own animal. Right. Um it is a small park with a huge name, yeah. and there are people that care rabidly about the place. Gettysburg is a place where minutia is a major thing, <laughs> and so if you mess up Little Round Top, that's a big deal. Oh yeah. So we're not going to mess up. You're going to have Top. rebels charging it again because <laughs> <laughs> people care about it. Yeah. People care about. They it. They do care. They do care, and they worry when they hear. So this is the thing when they hear. Uh, you know, I don't know if you if you know what I'm talking about. When there was some report that was floating around, and I don't remember, but it was. Do you know what I'm talking about, Eric? It was it was a little report. It was a uh, I don't know. proposal. The, proposal yeah, is yeah, the, the word. The rumor mill around here grinds a lot of grist. But it was it was uh, submitted to the Park Service, and it might have actually been the Park Service's release. I don't remember, but uh, it went around, and everybody was like, "Oh my god!" Like, and there were these like flying saucer looking things that were going to go oh, observation yeah. decks, you know. And so that's gotten everybody worried, and no one can get a. a well, I should say that the uh, the Park Service hasn't said anything definitively on it, and so it's just speculation and conjecture that's been coming out. And uh, but recently, when Charlie was on, he he finally had some answers that came from the Park Service that he was privy to, and and he shared them with us. And it's not as bad as as rumor and speculation <laughs> always make it seem. So the Park Service has an obligation for some of these major projects to have a, a public outreach component yeah. where yeah. the public can comment on these things. And so when you go for a lot of these these public comment periods. You know, the proposal might be, you know, on the one hand, we do absolutely nothing, right? And on the other, the other option might be, you know, we do something incredibly, you know, grandiose. And then usually it's somewhere in the middle that right. we end up, um, you know, becomes the preferred option for us. And so we're great at, we're great at planning and creating documents. And uh, <laughs> very good. The federal government is very good yeah. at creating proposals. I think that might be the thing that the federal government does best. It might be. Is create yeah. documents. So real back to the the clearing and and all that stuff over at Culp's Hill. Uh, you know how the uh, the park lets uh, local farmers use the different fields yeah. to plant crops and things, and and I've seen horses out at the Rose Farm, and and I know that those aren't Park <laughs> Service horses, and you know uh, cattle over by Culp's Hill, I believe. Um, I always hear people say well, it would be great if they would let cattle graze in the woods and just keep the underbrush down. Uh, how unrealistic is that? Let's they, say McPherson's Woods. You barb wire off a couple of sections yeah. of it. So there are other parks that have utilized, for example, goats. Um, and goats, you know, we've yeah. looked at, into that as well. 
the big thing that we always have to be very uh, cognizant of is we work in an archaeologically fragile place. Okay. Right? Beneath the surface is the archaeological record. Oh, and yeah. Whatever we do, we need to be very cognizant that we're not damaging that. And so some things that might sound like really viable ideas when you bring them out to uh, a delicate landscape might not work. So in other words, sure. uh, cattle would be great at clearing the underbrush, but they would also tread upon the land and uh, possibly uh, destroy issues, some yeah. stuff yeah. there that's uh, of issues. a historical value. Okay, I get that. All right, all right. So there's that answer, ladies and gentlemen. So let's uh, put that to rest. <laughs> um, and let's see. I think we've covered everything there. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that uh, the people should know? Oh, I'm sure we're missing something. But uh, <laughs> how about the yeah. Warfield House? Warfield Go House. Oh yeah, 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 what, yeah. What are you guys planning on doing with that this year, if anything? Well, right now we got to finish the the re rehabilitation work. Okay. And so, if you've driven by it recently, you'll notice all the modern portions of the house are removed. Go on. The, the modern tree screen has been removed. And that's yeah. huge. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the inside, we still need to do address the interior and figure out, okay, how are we going to treat that? Um, and then we got to provide access to the public. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I, I I am looking forward to a future where the Warfield House becomes a major interpretive site in the yeah. park. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, is it? Uh, what was there? Was another one, wasn't there? Yeah. The uh, the uh, oh my god, the digital scans of the interior. Right. Of the we talked oh, about the 3D that. house. Yeah. 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 What's the yeah. latest with that? Well, well so we, we did wide, a couple. Of, we did a couple of homes. Yep. We did the Eisenhower House. We did the Wills House. We did the Bryan Farm. We did the Widow Leister House, and we worked with a great company where they did these immersive 3D scans of interiors. And you know, digitally as a visitor, you can go and you know sit in the room that uh, the Council of War was held in, the Leister House. Uh, they've been they're live. They've been immensely popular for us. And where you know, can I, people find them? Uh, on the National Park Service website, www.mps.gov/gett. Okay. Uh, all right, Chris. Well, uh, I believe I have asked you everything I want to know. And uh, if uh, anybody wants uh, general information, what's uh, what's the phone number they can call the visitor center to get a hold of you guys? Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Google it. Seven one seven three three four one one two four. There you go. One one two four. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Chris. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry.